News every 15 minutes, weather every 10, and sports twice an hour. News Talk KGVO, AM 1290, and now 101.5 FM. You're listening to Montana Morning with Peter Christian. Armed burglar apparently still on the loose. Good morning, everyone. It's Montana Morning. It's Wednesday, November 11, 2015. It is Veterans Day. We'll have more on that here in just a few moments. All right now, the sky's cloudy, 28 degrees in Missoula and western Montana. Our newscast sponsored by Dig It Excavating, where they bring 30 years of excellence to every job. 214-4292 is the number. The search for an armed burglar who disappeared Monday uh, it continues even after a suspect was taken into custody. According to Sheriff's Department spokeswoman Brenda Bassett, the victim was threatened at gunpoint by a man posing as someone from law enforcement could not identify the suspect in a lineup. Did a photo lineup with the victim. Uh, the person that they had uh, in for questioning wasn't identified by the victim. So right now we don't have uh, any suspects in custody. No arrests have been made. Originally, deputies and officers were searching for a white male in his 30s or 40s, about 5'8", wearing a, bl- a dark blue baseball cap and a green American Eagle sweatshirt and jeans. Bassett said the description is still the one authorities are using as they continue their investigation. Detectives are following up with interviews today and hopefully pulling up surveillance videos from local gas stations and uh, hopefully maybe from the school so they can see if anyone walked by with that description and then hopefully uh, if there is, that we can put that out to the public to hopefully identify the suspect. Anyone with information asked to call 911 or the county sheriff's office, 258-4810. Human rights activists and religious leaders are calling for a man suspected of making online threats to schools and religious groups to be charged with a felony. David Lenio's attorney filed a motion last week asking to delay his client's jury trial as a plea deal was imminent. Many have since speculated the felony intimidation charge against Lenio could be reduced to a misdemeanor. Members of the Callis Bell Human Rights Group Love Lives Here and Jewish Community gathered outside the Flathead County Justice Center Monday to protest the possible plea agreement. Demonstrators called on County Attorney Ed Corrigan to ensure Lenio was not allowed to keep his guns as part of any plea agreement. The Missoula police officer involved in last week's motel shooting incident has been identified. Here's Public Information Officer Travis Welsh. We have identified the officer involved in the incident. Uh, officer Garth Cragen was placed on administrative leave as a result of the discharging of his weapon uh, on November 5th. Uh, Officer Gregan has eight years of experience with Missoula PD. Well said the investigation continues through a state agency out of Helena. The state of Montana Division of Criminal Investigation is continuing its investigation of this incident. This is all standard practice in incidents of this nature, and a determination of his return to work will be made at a later time as information becomes available from the investigation. The incident began when a U.S. Marshals received a tip that Olahide Fletcher, a fugitive from Washington State, was in a vehicle at the motel. He was surrounded by police and attempted to ram a vehicle full of U.S. Marshals. Uh, Officer Cragen fired three shots into the vehicle, and it stopped after crashing into the Marshals' car. A Yellowstone County jury has awarded just over $2 million in damages to a Texas man after a bank negligently included the legal description of his Billings property in the foreclosure paperwork for a Butte property. District Judge Ingrid Gustafson granted Jason Norman's motion for a summary judgment on the title claim in May of 2014. Jurors determined the damages against Deutsche Bank National Trust, Aquin Loan Servicing, and the company that bought the Butte house during last week. A two-vehicle accident on Highway 93 North near Pamlo Monday took the life of a three-year-old Ronan girl. Highway Patrol Trooper Terry Rosenbaum said improper use of a car seat may have contributed to the child's death. Everybody was wearing seatbelts at the time, but as the investigation continues, I'm finding out that uh, the three-year-old may have been improperly restrained. The three-year-old ended up passing away about an hour and a half after the crash occurred. Rosenbaum asks parents to make sure the children are properly restrained whenever the vehicle is in motion. Making sure that the booster seat or the car seat is the proper size for the weight limit, for the size, for the child, age appropriate, and making sure that not only the lap belt but the shoulder belt is properly on the child. The name of the child has not yet been released. A hunter in the Clark's Fork area is recovering after being attacked by a grizzly bear near the Wyoming-Montana state border. The Cody Enterprise is reporting that Game and Fish Bear Wise Community Coordinator Dusty Lassiter says the bear charged at the mule deer hunter, knocked him down, and then fled. 
The hunter was not harmed in last week's incident, but was taken to a hospital for evaluation. Grizzly bears have had an active season in the Yellowstone region, but grizzly activity has slowed as some bears have already begun their winter hibernation. Officials say deer, antelope, elk, and bird hunters should still remain cautious of bears left in the area. After first being available on November 2nd, thousands of Montanans have already signed up for the Montana Help Plan, which expands Medicaid throughout the state. Montana Department of Health and Human Services Intergovernmental Relations Officer Jessica Rhodes provides these details. Roughly 5,500 Montanans have already signed up for the Montana Help Plan that will extend health care uh, to thousands of Montana residents who had previously been denied coverage in the past. That's an extremely uh, strong showing. It shows how important this plan is for Montanans, and um, we're thrilled that uh, the support has been uh, so strong. Rhodes says uh, Montana has goals for the next few months and that the state does hope to have five times the current number of enrollees before the end of the year. In the fiscal note, Montana estimated that up to 25,000 people could sign up in the first year. 70,000 is the number that are total eligible, and people sign up over time. And so uh, in the first year, we estimate that up to 25,000 people could sign up. After four years, the estimate is that up to 45,000 people could sign up, and so on. Coverage for those under the HELP Act will begin in January of next year. Unlike Medicare and most private insurance plans, there's no open enrollment period for Medicaid. Well, it is Veterans Day. Lots going on this morning to honor veterans. A breakfast at the American Legion Post 27 at 845. By Ronan starting in about an hour. With a full breakfast, donations accepted at the door. Also, VFW Post 209 at 245 West Main, hosting a breakfast for veterans and their families. That also starts at 7. And there'll be a, a Veterans Day service at the county courthouse at the Doughboy Statue at 11 o'clock this morning. And it's always sponsored by American Legion Post 101. There will also be an indoor ceremony at Grizzly Peak at 3600 American Way. That'll be again at 3 this afternoon. News talk time now is 612. News talk, KGVO. Missoula's official weather station. Mostly cloudy skies today with a chance of rain and snow showers. Highs will be in the upper 30s. Winds will be breezy with wind gusts up to 20 miles per hour. Areas of snow tonight with snow banding possible, a quick 1 to 3 inches in store. I'm meteorologist Brooke Foster for KECI 13.